Hello, today is May 31st, coming to you with really important updates on what happened in the debt ceiling. I'm sorry, I'm at Panera right now, pretty informal, um, just trying to slam out a lot of work here. But um, so if you hear some background noise, people walking around, please bear with me. Uh, just wanted to uh, get this video out and get the information on what's been going on with the debt ceiling. So I know I released um, a pretty frightening slash scary um, video last week on what was happening with the legislation in the House. And this week has good news because uh, what ended up being the compromise for ex increasing the debt ceiling so that the United States doesn't default on U.S. Treasury bills and the debt that we owe. Essentially, um, Kevin McCarthy and um, the Biden administration were able to come to pretty good deals. I'm only going to talk about the student loan part specifically. Obviously, they made deals on the defense spending and um, food stamp programs, all kinds of different issues that I'm not going to cover in detail here, although I've been looking into it. I'm going to talk about what was decided for the student loan piece. So first of all, what was decided legislatively for sure in the compromise is that the Biden administration will not extend the payment pause. That means 60 days after June 30th, which is the end of August, uh, the debt ceiling compromise essentially makes it so that, it, that the administration cannot extend the pause any longer. This is the good news, though. The good news is that um, the Supreme, that, that the um, compromise does not stop the Supreme Court's um, ruling. It does not impact the Supreme Court decision. So if the Supreme Court rules in favor of loan forgiveness, which meant, which I'm doubtful of, but essentially, if the Supreme Court rules in favor, then um, the legislation and the agreement does not uh, legislate or get Congress involved in terms of stopping the forgiveness and the relief. So that's really good news. An additional piece of really good news is that uh, the it does not this debt ceiling compromise does not stop President Biden's authority to pause payments in the future. So if there's another pandemic or another state of emergency, this legislation does not stop Biden uh, from pausing payments in the future. It also does not impact Biden and the Department of Education's ability to manage student loan programs or student loan forgiveness programs in the future. So that means that President Biden's administration, the, the U.S. Secretary um, of Education, can still regulate and build new income-driven repayment programs. Okay, I'm choosing my words very wisely because um, it does not, it also does not stop uh, the administration from dishing out relief through public service loan forgiveness. Uh, another piece of good news is it does not go back and legislate interest payments for those who have already received loan forgiveness. So that's another piece of good news. So last week I discussed how um, as of September of 2022, last year, any interest that accrued on loans people who got their loans forgiven would have to go back and pay interest. That is now no longer the case, uh, which is good. So they're not touching um, borrowers who received relief in the past. They're not touching future income-driven repayment plan adjustments. They're not touching future forgiveness programs at all. Um, and they're not touching any type of legislation or legislating, even if the Supreme Court decides to grant the ten to 20000 of loan forgiveness. Again, a reminder, the ten to 20000 of loan forgiveness is if you're a Pell Grant recipient, you receive twenty grand of loan forgiveness. If you're not a Pell Grant recipient, it's ten grand, and there are earning limits. So if you're a single person filer, single filer for your purpose of your taxes, then it's 125000 um, in income. If you're married, it's two hundred and fifty. Okay, that's just a reminder on that. Uh, so that's really, really good news. Um, another piece of information 
uh, is that Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts is drafting an amendment to the debt ceiling compromise to make it so that the administration can continue to extend the payment pause. Um, she's drafting le legislation. Her team is now. I don't think that that's going to get passed. I think the president um, working on a compromise that enables his administration to, in the future, um, extend payment pause if necessary, continue to work on some of the big issues like the income-driven repayment update, which would allow, which would actually decrease the monthly payment obligation by half and more than half for some borrowers, uh, as well as essentially rewrite and make the income-driven plans more generous. That is Biden's ultimate pathway to granting forgiveness, even if the Supreme Court strikes down forgiveness, right? So I think Biden did a really, he did a really good job in terms of getting the core aspects of loan forgiveness to be intact. And I think he did that because he essentially told Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans that he would veto anything that took away uh, his ability to to really to to he he essentially said he's not going to hurt a lot of Americans like putting interest back on have them require them to pay interest if they've already got their loans forgiven his ability to legislate, uh, his administration and the Department of Ed's ability to actually manage and draft forgiveness programs and manage income-driven repayment programs. He basically said, if you do anything to inhibit our ability to do that, I will veto it. So I think he did a really good job and it turned out to be a really good compromise. The payment pause, he said, would end anyway. So I don't think it's anything out of what was expected. Um, and that is the summary of how the debt ceiling legislation impacts student loans. If this information uh, is helpful, your student loan borrower, please subscribe, like uh, this channel. And of course, if you like anything related to student loans or personal finance topics, please like, subscribe. And I cannot wait to bring you pressing updates, important information uh, as it pertains to student loans and other financial topics um, in the future. Have a great day.